In this video, we intend to show how to solve and submit the ISBN exercise from Series 7. In this exercise, we will not only work with the ISBN 10 code, but also with the ISBN 13 code. An analogous formula applies to both codes. The last digit of the code is a check digit that must meet certain criteria. This formula applies to the ISBN 10 while the formula below applies to the ISBN 13 code. We should now write a function isISBN that takes a string and an optional second argument. The function must determine whether or not the first argument is a valid ISBN code. The second argument indicates whether the function should check validity for ISBN 13 or ISBN 10 codes. This argument takes a Boolean value, which is true if the function needs to check the, for ISBN 13 codes, and this is also the default value for the second parameter. In the examples below, we can see how the function needs to be used. In the first example, the first argument is a 13 character string but the function will test whether or not this is a valid ISBN 10 code because the second argument has the value false. The function returns false. In the second example, the same string is supplied and the function checks whether or not this is a valid ISBN 13 code. In that case, the answer is true. So in this problem, we should provide program code to test both the ISBN 10 and ISBN 13 codes. Since the method for both subproblems is analogous, we split the problem into smaller subproblems. We will write a function for testing ISBN 10 codes and another one for testing ISBN 13 codes. Then, depending on the optional parameter provided, the isISBN function only has to call the appropriate function and return the result. Let's switch to PyCharm. We will use the solution of series 5 as our starting point and extend the existing code. In the isISBN function from series 5, we tested whether the argument is a string with length 10 and whether all the characters, except the last one, are digits. The check digit was subsequently calculated and tested, and the function returns a Boolean value, which indicates whether the argument is a string that represents a valid ISBN 10 code. Here again, we could make use of the alternative notation with list comprehension as we did in exercise 6, like this. Now we will rename this function as isISBN10. In a similar way, we can solve the second subproblem. We write a function isISBN13, which also gets one argument, code, and which checks whether the argument is a 13 character string and whether all the characters are digits. After this, the check digit will be computed as well using the given formula and checked. And once again, this function returns a Boolean value, which indicates whether the argument is a string that represents a valid ISBN 13 code. The first tests are analogous as in the function is ISBN 10. We check whether the argument is a 13 character string and whether all the characters are digits. In the next step, we compute the check digit in the same way as in the ISBN 10 code, except that we use a different formula. Here, too, we start with a sum that equals zero. When we check the formula in Dodona, we can see that all the odd elements must simply be added and all the even elements must be multiplied with three and subsequently added to the sum. Please note that x1 will occur in the string argument in position zero, x3 in position two, x5 in position four. 
the elements in position 0, 2, 4 of the string must be added to the sum, while the elements on position 1, 3, 5 of the string must be multiplied with 3 and subsequently added to the sum. We return to PyCharm and compute the requested sum. For the first 12 characters, we determine each time whether they are in an even or in an odd position in the string, and depending on this, we set the term to be added to the sum. Of this sum, we determine the remainder after division by 10, subtract this result from 10, and again take the remainder after division by 10. Now in the code we get this. All we need to do now is to compare this calculated check digit to the last character of the argument. We convert this character into an integer and compare both. If they are equal, then the code is a valid ISBN 13 code and we return the value true. In the other case, false is returned. As we did in the previous function, here as well we can use a list comprehension to compute the check digits, like this. So we have written two separate functions for testing ISBN 10 codes and ISBN 13 codes. The function is ISBN, which is given two arguments, should check whether the entered code is correct. The second argument, ISBN 13, is optional and indicates whether you want to test the first argument as ISBN 13 or as ISBN 10 code. The standard value for this parameter is true. This gives us the following code. If the optional parameter ISBN13 is true, the function is ISBN13 is called and the result is returned. In the other case, the result of the function is ISBN10 is returned. We can write this code in a shorter way as well and then we get this. By splitting the problem into several subproblems in which we have written separate functions for testing an ISBN 10 code and an ISBN 13 code, the function is ISBN has become very simple. We retrieve the sample data from the donor and add these as doc tests. We now test our program by running it and we get no errors during the execution. So far, the exercise seems to be correct. In the second part of the assignment, we are asked to write a function rISBN, which determines for all codes from a given list whether or not they are valid ISBN codes. This function takes a list of codes as its argument, and an optional second argument can be passed to the function. If this argument has the value true, the function must check whether all the codes in the given list are valid ISBN 13 codes. If the optional argument is false, the function must check whether all the codes in the given list are valid ISBN 10 codes. If the optional argument has the value none, which is its default value, the type of each code in the given list should be derived from its length as a string. The function should return a new list containing only values true and false, indicating whether or not the code at the corresponding position in the given list of codes is a valid ISBN code. We now write the corresponding code in PyCharm. We create the function rISBN, which has two arguments, codes, which contain the list of codes to be checked, and optionally, a second argument, ISBN 13, with default value none. This function must retrieve a new list. We will first initialize the new list before building it and finally returning it. 
we add the commands as we used to do. In the first part of this function, we create the list. In the second part, we check every element in the list of codes. And for each code in the list, we first check whether or not this code is string. If it isn't, we add false to the new list. If it is, we should check the value of the optional parameter ISBN13. If this one has the value true or false, the function is ISBN is called, with the first argument being the current code and the second argument being the value of ISBN13. If the optional argument has the value num, its default value, the type of code should be derived from its length as a string. If the length is 13, then we call is ISBN with the second parameter true. In the other case, we call this function with the second parameter false. For each code in the list, we add the result to the new list evaluations. The only thing we still need to do now is returning the new list. We submit our code to Dodona. And obtain a correct result. In this video, we watched how to complete the ISBN exercise from series 7 by using different functions and using lists and list comprehension.